This channel is proudly sponsored by Bybit, the official crypto partner of Red Bull's Formula One team. I've been using their platform for my personal crypto savings over the last few months, and when they got in touch to support the channel, I was super, super excited. Currently, they're offering you guys a special new promo for the first 100 of you to deposit $10 or more onto the platform. You'll get another $10 free. Also, five lucky winners will get their initial deposit doubled up to $1,000. That means if you deposited $1,000 onto the platform using my code below, you could be within a chance to get another $1,000 completely free. We've seen the landscape around crypto drastically change over the last couple of years and I genuinely believe it holds an important place in our future. However, please be careful as always when trading as you are liable uh, to lose money. But if you're interested and you're 18 or older, click the link down below to get started and see why Red Bull and myself, as well as thousands of others, trust Bybit as their crypto. Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video where today we're here back with something a little bit different. Now, as some of you may have known that follow the channel fairly closely, I went to the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix a couple of weekends ago. It was very, very good fun and some of you guys were sort of asking me for some footage from the weekend. Now, of course, I did get some videos and things like that, so I thought I'd just sort of combine them here today and show you guys some of the footage I had. It's kind of a half vlog, half just sort of little montage of bits and pieces that I picked up over the weekend. You know, I bought a new camera, so I wanted to try that out, so did some videos and everything like that. But of course, as always, a massive thank you to all of you guys for the continued support as well. And yeah, let's get into my weekend at the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix. Netflix are a bunch of and there we go, that is going to be a magical, magical intro to the video. But yeah, Imola though, never been to Italy prior to this weekend. Uh, in the past, I've been to a couple of Grand Prix before. I've been to Belgium, I think twice, and then Austria once before as well. So, you know, it's not quite my first ever Formula One experience, but it's been a while since I've been on a plane as much as anything else. It was nice to finally get away once again. And over the last couple of years have been very, very tough for everyone. Um, you know, I've sort of just got knuckled down on with YouTube work, uh, to be honest with you guys, throughout a lot of it. But yeah, to finally be able to go away once more and explore the world has certainly been very, very good fun. Of course, like I said, a lot of this, though, is just going to be footage over the course of the weekend. I did do a little bit a couple of times of sort of talking between some of the sessions. But of course, yeah, a lot of it was just sort of footage from the weekend that I'll talk about. But yeah, finally, you know, that, that first little sort of montage getting away in a plane, it's it's finally, finally coming back. Of course, you've got things like looking over the Mont Blanc and everything like that, you know, as you get closer and closer to Italy. Unfortunately, no footage of the landing, but I thought you'd do some nice time lapses for you guys as well over the way. But yeah, just traveling once more it's it's just so weird but it feels so good but yeah let's let's get down to Imola so we actually flew out on the Thursday before the weekend and about two minutes away from our apartment in Bologna there was this huge sign advertising the weekend and yeah that just makes it that little bit more special you know the the excitement starts to build and then of course you get to Friday traveling to the circuit seeing all of the signs with Imola written on them things yeah very quickly start to become real So we were actually sat down at Tosa for the entirety of the weekend. You know, Imola, it's a track that, let's be fair, probably hasn't been given a bit of a touch-up in terms of sort of stands and everything like that. You know, the last time there were any audience at the Grand Prix circuit for a Formula 1 event was all the way back in 2006. No, that was before I even started watching Formula 1 as well there. So, safe to say, some of the facilities I think were lacking ever so slightly. You know, being down at Tosa, of course, an iconic corner. Certain moments, you know, Michael Schumacher barging Juan Pablo Montoya off the road. You know, that iconic line after the race of, you have to be an idiot not to see me. You know, occasionally you've seen some big sends down there as well. You know, had this been back in the late 80s, early 90s, you know, we could have seen Nigel Mansell with his 360. But you got a pretty good view, obviously, down at the Gilles Villeneuve chicane as well. And then, yeah, pretty good run up the hill as well, obviously, after Tosa. So, you know, it was a shame the TV was actually in the way. I, I certainly wouldn't have traded it for anything, but, you know, you maybe could have seen a little bit more through the chicane as well there. But, of course, yeah, it was 
You can't get any seating right down at turn one, which of course was always going to be where most of the action was for the weekend. But just get into the circuit here. And I think it was the Formula 3 cars we heard go first around. It just sort of sent shivers down your spine. You know, being back at a racing circuit after so long, it was great to finally be back. Of course, Friday was mostly notable, of course, for being sprint qualifying. So, I mean, we were always kind of expecting it to be a bit special. You know, Ferrari have had such a good start to the year. We were really hoping this weekend, you know, they could come out strong. And the Tafosi support everywhere was phenomenal to see. You know, you couldn't help but cheer for Ferrari, as you'll see over the course of the video as well. But, yeah, just being back at a racing circuit once again. So, let's get in to some of the qualifying footage from Friday. It was a bit of carnage, so I kind of tried to film when it was dry with my camera. And then, of course, when it started raining again, a lot of the footage is from my phone, where that's waterproof, and I don't think my camera is. But yeah, just seeing Formula 1 cars back on the circuit again, you kind of forget, just even though the 2022 regs have slowed them down slightly, just how stupidly fast a Formula 1 car is. You know, you watch the Formula 3s go around, they're, you know, pretty decent. Of course, they're trying to get their best qualifying laps in as well. But, yeah, Formula 1 cars weigh a little bit more now. You can sort of see that a bit through the slower corners, but so much louder. You know, people go on about how Formula 1 cars nowadays are too quiet. They certainly aren't when you're pretty close to them. And just obviously the way they'd all accelerate up the hill as well. You can see George Russell coming through now. There's just both Mercedes. You know, I was, I was still hoping they'd have a good weekend. Uh, before things kick off. But yeah, just seeing the cars pull up the hill, you know, a thousand horsepower being put down into the road. It was a sight to behold until, of course, the inevitable happened. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I think we were all kind of expecting Latifi to bin it at some point during the weekend. But right at the start of Q1, it was it was earlier than I had my money on, put it that way. As there we go, Charles Leclerc went fastest. Exactly what everyone around the circuit wanted to see. Well, we managed to survive Friday running, then didn't we? Just about. Just about. Um, yeah, a lot of red flags, um, but at least at least now we know where we're going. Everything like that, which is always good. Verstappen on pole. I mean, at the time of this being recorded we don't know whether we might see a penalty for him it looked to us like there might have been some improvements through yellow flags but i'm sure by the time this finally goes live well the weekend will be completely over um, and everything like that but we'll wait and see uh, about that uh anything else i'm sure charlotte a bit gutted not to be on pole site's gonna have a lot of work to do over the rest of the weekend which is going to be interesting to see sort of what that ferrari can do tomorrow's meant to be a bit dry though yeah. so with a bit of luck, you know, we want to see science at the front. I desperately need to see science at the front. I put, well, I didn't put money on it, but I said in our podcast he'd win on on Tuesday. So, so far that's not looking particularly good for me. Anyway, I'm sure Jamie's going to pick up even more points against me there because he even got Verstappen being on pole correct as well. So, not looking good so far, but Formula 2, Formula 3 was good as well. Um, obviously saw some free practice from them, some qualifying as well, which is good but we'll wait and see what they can do in races over the weekend as well. Uh, but yeah, good good Friday so far. Just hoping the rest of it's a little bit drier. Well, there we go then. That is the end of Friday running. Of course, like we saw, Max Verstappen took pole position for the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix there. But yeah, just the crowd every time, especially obviously Charles Leclerc, but when Sainz would come round as well, everyone cheering them on. And just being there, that atmosphere makes all of the difference. Let's get in to sunny Saturday. Unfortunately, then, my sort of preview footage for the second day of the session uh, was 
Um, yeah, it, it was quite windy, I think is the way we're going to word this. So without trying to deafen you guys, basically, uh, my dad and I were just going through our predictions for Saturday. He reckoned Charlotte Leclerc was still going to be able to take the victory away from Max Verstappen. I had my money on Max Verstappen being strong Saturday. Ferrari just holding a little bit back, ready for Sunday. But yeah, definitely the best day of the weekend in terms of the weather. Unfortunately, the seats at Imola were, were not very waterproof, as in they'd get wet and then water would just come up back into your chair, which was not great. I think definitely, you know, if they're going to be signing a longer term contract with Formula One, I think that there needs to be a few upgrades around the venue. Like I said, you know, it's a track that hasn't been used in well over a decade at this point for any sort of Formula One capacity style racing. But yeah, let's let's get into a bit more footage. And these were the cars I was very, very intrigued to see. Of course, Port Super Cup, they've been around with the Formula 1 events for quite a few years now, but this is the first time I've actually seen the all-new Cup cars, at least for me personally. Now, the old Cup cars I loved, just because of the fact they were absurdly loud. Uh, I cannot describe how loud the old cars are. These ones aren't quite the same, but still sound pretty phenomenal. I mean, they, they don't really add much to the video. I, I don't know so sort of much about poor Super Cup. I don't follow it particularly closely. But what I do know is a flat six Porsche engine with what is as near as a straight cut exhaust as you're probably going to find in a modern racing car. The, these things still sound phenomenal. And then, of course, we move into the sprint race. Yes, two races. We were very, very lucky uh, to be going to Imola this weekend. You know, sprint racing, I know a lot of people don't like to watch at home. But I cannot stress this enough. Seeing a sprint race over a free practice session makes a weekend so much more tempting to go to. Of course, we mentioned it on the podcast. We spoke about this this week. You know, Jamie went to the Silverstone Sprint Race last year. I went, obviously, to this one at Imola. It's so worth it when you're at a Grand Prix weekend. You feel like you're getting so much more for your money. But, yeah, we have Max Verstappen on pole. Charles Leclerc starting alongside him. You know, were we going to see something similar? You know, were we going to see him try and get the jump? off the start as well and I mean yeah just in a second you know you can sort of hear all the other cars going through but when you hear Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz come round the, the crowd absolutely erupts.
Australia, il pilota del team Mercedes con il 46, figlio della Marte, con lo suo Hart, il campione di Azione del Mick Schumacher, con il numero 44, sette volte campione del mondo, con lo Mercedes da Bajester Team, signori, dal Reminito da Terevenge, Lewis Hamilton! immediately we ended up with a safety car as Guan Yu Zhou and Pierre Gasly decided they wanted to just take each other out but Charles Leclerc taking the lead straight off the start I guess the real big question was going to be whether he could hang on for the rest of the race now my prediction wasn't looking great so far like I said pre-weekend I predicted Carlos Sainz to win the GP obviously in the podcast we did a couple of weeks ago then I predicted Max for the sprint race which wasn't looking particularly good up at this point of the GP anyway Saturday the highlight was watching Carlos Sainz carve his way back up to where he should have been at the end of qualifying but of course the real battle was at the front there Max Verstappen had kept Charles Leclerc pretty honest throughout most of the GP and with just a couple of laps to go he was getting close enough and I think yeah a lot of the Tifosi were sensing the inevitable might happen.
Miller's going to have to go defensive. He's much closer. Leclerc's going to have to outbreak him. Go on. So it did end up being Max Verstappen who drew first blood then in the sprint race, taking away the win from Charles Leclerc late on in the day. Unfortunately, my camera had died, so I couldn't sort of do an end of day one recap for you guys. But yeah, that just left us then with Sunday's Grand Prix. Right, final day then here from Imola. This morning, still nice and sunny. We'll wait and see. I mean, we, we've kind of packed for everything, haven't we, today? We have, yes. Um... Yeah, I mean, unfortunately I couldn't record anything after yesterday. The camera unfortunately died, but you know, we're still learning. Um, surprise though, in the end, to be fair, it looks like the new cars, even Imola works. Hello. Uh, even Imola works in the dirty air, which is good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we've got to see some overtakes as well. Not down at toe, so I think we're going to have to see someone make a mistake to really get any chance of a move there. But for Stappen starting on pole again then, what we call in today? I'm going Charles, I'm sticking, I'm being faithful to Ferrari. Being faithful to Ferrari, fair enough. Well, I've already, like I said, made my predictions during the week. I'm not going to change away from them. Carlos Sainz is my prediction to win then, which, I mean, we're both going Ferrari, which I suppose is good. But we'll wait and see as to what happens in the end. You know, I think I'm still a small believer in Ferrari. We're just holding a little bit back yesterday. Sort of trying to lull Red Bull into a false sense of security. And I yeah, really wonder whether, you know, I mean, all the teams now have got so much data from yesterday, you know, unless we get some rain, things might be a little bit predictable for the teams at least. But, you never know, if someone might try and throw a spanner into works. Latifi's still got an F1 car, so I'm sure if he feels like it, he'll stack it at some point to make things interesting. We'll wait and see, I think. And then talking about someone making a mistake, unfortunately, we pretty much got to the circuit just as Yuri Vips uh, decided he was going to boop the wall absolutely love the Leclerc poster behind him. I'm pretty certain they were forced to take that down, but I just thought that was hilarious. Yeah, didn't get to see much F2 over the weekend, but then the rain fell. And I mean, just look at this for the Porsche Cup race. It was not fun conditions for any of those drivers. Did see a couple of small mistakes there. You can see oh, a little bit of rubbing his racing between the couple of cars on lap one. But yeah, there was obviously we had a huge amount of rain during the Porsche Super Cup race, and then after that, there was about a two and a half hour gap between there and the Grand Prix, and then everyone around us was looking at the weather, because apparently there was meant to be rain about an hour into the race. Of course, we know what happens there. Whether for better or for worse, it didn't end up arriving, but I think we were pretty cold by that point. Go on, Charles. Oh, Charles messed it up. Look at Lando. Oh, 
Of course then, as we know, Sunday wasn't the most exciting race we've had so far this year. I think we've had so many brilliant races. You know, the opening three rounds have all had quite a lot of drama, quite a lot of controversy. Unfortunately, yeah, after lap one, the only other real incident was actually Charles Leclerc bidding it by himself. Unfortunately, I didn't actually get any footage of that either. But, you know, a lot of the race, I was just sort of enjoying it, sort of being there, everything like that. And I was still freezing cold. You can see still the track was very, very wet after the, all the rain showers earlier on in the morning. But, you know, Charles Leclerc still did a pretty good job trying to slice and dice his way back through the field there until he made that mistake. Obviously, he made a lot of mistakes, though, over the course of the afternoon. But, you know, Red Bull just seemed to have that little bit extra this weekend. All my hopes and dreams for Ferrari. You know, I predicted Sainz to win, and he bottled it. I just predicted Ferrari had a little bit more pace, and it turned out Red Bull did there. There we go. I think there was Yuki Tsunoda going for a cheeky little send down at Toaster as well there. So, love Yuki providing me with a little bit of the action as well. But, yeah, didn't grab much more footage. But, you know, it was just such an experience to be at Imola as well. There you can see just going through the last little bits of video that I got. Of course, Charles Leclerc trying to get the run on another car here. I think this is the move on Lando Norris, I think. No, it's actually, sorry, him closing up to Sergio Perez. But, of course, don't think could quite make the move there. You can see just Red Bull had so much top-end speed over the course of the weekend. But, yeah, Imola, though, a fantastic venue for a Formula 1 race. You know, so much history around this circuit as well. And, you know, seeing things like the Senna Memorial, the Roland Ratzenberger little memorial as well. There, You know, things like the quotes from Enzo Ferrari talking about Gilles Villeneuve down at the chicane as well. You know, I've seen this track so much on TV. I've driven so many laps around it on at Sims as well. They, you know, heading to the circuit was certainly an experience I won't forget. Like I mentioned though a couple of times during this video, you know, if Imola has signed a long-term deal for Formula 1, I think they definitely need some upgrades to the facilities though. Like I said, it was still a fantastic weekend, but I think probably not helped by the fact, you know, I've mainly sort of been to Spa and obviously the Red Bull Ring as well has had a lot of funding in recent years as well, you know, to sort of bring it back up to an FIA proper grade one circuit. Imola kind of just got thrusted back into the limelight during COVID. And yeah, I really do think, you know, if they want some longer term success around the circuit, I think they're going to have to make a few more big changes as well. But unfortunately, yeah, that was the last footage I got from the weekend. I was going to do a little bit, you know, coming home on Monday, but we had a really early flight and I don't think any of you want to see my face uh, with a few hours of sleep nonetheless. But if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like and get yourself subscribed as well. And yeah, we'll be back very, very soon with more Formula One content. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.